All right, are you ready to join the rebellion? The rebel leader is here today on the next Simple Step podcast. His name is Steve Cam, and he's the founder of nerdfitness.com, an online community geared to help nerds and video game fanatics get fit and healthy. And uh, Steve, tell us about this rebe rebellion and um, why nerds? Sure. So hi, everybody. Uh, also, Paul, thanks so much for having me. I'm, I'm really pumped to talk about this stuff. So I like to say that I was raised by two loving parents and a Nintendo entertainment system. So yeah. I, you know, I grew up in the uh, grew up in the eighties, and the I think the first game I ever played was probably The Legend of Zelda. It might have been the original Mario, but probably The Legend of Zelda for Nintendo. And ever since then, I've just had this uh, fascination with imaginary worlds and and thinking of life as if it was a video game. Um, and as time went on, you know, I grew up, you know, moved on from video or say move on from video games. I still play them. Um, <laughs> but, you know, then then it was on to reading Tolkien and um, Brian Jocks, who wrote the Redwall series and eventually Stephen King and just falling in love with this idea of thinking of, you know, life as a video game and us being part of this really powerful world and and kind of adding some excitement to the the, the boringness that might come from life in suburbia. And, uh, I, you know, I had played sports and was fairly active through most of my youth while also spending a lot of my time doing nerdy stuff. And it was after college that I finally kind of figured out how important nutrition was to being healthy. And once I kind of cracked that code, I realized like, hey, wait a second. Like if I'm a, if I've been doing this stuff for a long time and I love it, and even I didn't know some of these things. Like, I wonder if I can help other people not make all of the mistakes that I made. And uh, I was like, well, I'm not going to become just like the Mr. Fitness. Like, that's that's not that seems like too broad of a, a topic. Um, so, like, what do I what do I do? Like, how do I who do I help and who who you know what resonates? And it was simple for me. I was like, I was literally playing probably 30, 40 hours a week of video games at the time. Like, well, I'm a huge nerd and I like fitness. So I Googled nerd and fitness and nothing popped up. Uh, this was back in 2007. Amazing. So this is yeah. like before Marvel had, I think even before Disney had acquired Marvel, maybe Star Wars had been acquired, but I don't even think that had happened yet. So like being a nerd wasn't cool. I was just a nerd that liked fitness. So I Googled nerd and fitness, nothing popped up. So I bought nerdfitness.com started writing articles as like a side hobby and uh, accidentally turned it into a business in a community. That's incredible. Okay. There's so many different questions I have for you. So, um, you know, you've taken your passion, millions of people play video games. And I think the first thought is like, man, could I do this for a living? <laughs> and then, you know, there's generally the answer is no, you can't just play <laughs> video games for a living, but you've actually cracked the code. You figured out like how to merge that passion and you've game gamified, um, you know, fitness, which is amazing. Um, and so, uh, you, you started blogging and then you turned that blog into a community. And so now here we are, uh, it, how's it going? I mean, you've been doing it for a long time now. Yeah, it's been, um, it's been quite the journey for sure. I, uh, you know, when I started, I didn't really know what it was going to become. And I had, you know, a, a, a mentor, uh, that he was unaware of at the time, but eventually I got a chance to meet him and have, we have since become good friends. Um, but a gentleman by the name of Chris Gillibo ran a blog called The Art of Nonconformity. And mm -hmm. he talked about building small businesses and traveling and, and thinking of life in a different way. And, you know, his whole philosophy was specifically like, hey, like build a community of people that are interested in your work and then ask them what they want and then build some sort of product or service around the things that they want. And I, I took that to heart while I was working a regular full-time day job at a company that I actually really loved. Um, and then I would go home every night and work on the business. And that was, you know, I spent a good two years doing that as a side project. And, uh, you know, eventually it got to the point where I thought I had a big enough audience. My expenses were pretty low. 
Um, and people just kept asking for like, just tell me what workout I should be doing. And I was like, okay, I think there's probably something here. Like, what if I were to create some sort of workout program that, uh, and also nutrition, nutritional guidance, but like for normal people that are not trying to get shredded or, um, but just like regular nerds trying to live a little bit better and, okay, how can I take my love of video games and kind of combine these things? And, and over time it's evolved from initially it was eBooks that, that you like literally bought through, I think a site called the eJunkie. And then it was on to online courses. And this is like before Coursera or any of the online course programs were even available. So we kind of had to do that. Um, and then I started hiring people from the community to help me scale some stuff. And then Google changed some algorithm and all of a sudden the site was getting a million visits a month to a bunch <laughs> of different articles. And it wow. was like, oh crap, uh, this is like a, this is a real thing. Um, yeah. Okay. And, you know, over time, it just kind of evolved from there from a, just a simple blog and a dork running it to now it's a team of, I want to say 40 people. Amazing. Um, to uh and um yeah a team of a team of 40 we have a, a pretty thriving coaching program um we have a, a habit building app that is gamified you get to create your own superhero and complete daily tasks to level up and earn new equipment and there's story elements to it that really kind of try to add some excitement and fun and, and a little bit of levity to uh you know the things that we are trying to get ourselves to do every day so it's been a wild ride. I've had to reinvent the company and myself multiple times uh, during this, I guess it's been 13, something like 13 years now, um, which is, you know, a bazillion years in internet land. Um, but it's super, it's been really fun. I've learned a lot about myself and, and about how to build a business and a community and how to, how to run a team and how not to run a team. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been really the occasional moment where I'm curled up in a ball on the floor saying, I don't know what I'm doing. And uh, more often than not, it's like, I'm really glad I'm doing this and it feels very fulfilling and I'm excited to be a part of it. Well, and I appreciate that authenticity, but isn't that kind of what you're teaching? Like a video game, you don't instantly master the game in the first time playing it, right? And to get up every different level, you have to try many times and fail many times and just keep building as you go, right? And Absolutely. you've actually written a book about this called Level Up Your Life, How to Unlock Adventure and Happiness by Becoming the Hero of Your Own Story. So this isn't just a blog. Uh, you're not just giving some general you know, fitness advice I mean, you're building an empire here and, uh, you know, and really teaching people uh, along the way how to uh, level up uh, their lives, uh, no matter, um, you know, who they are, right? They, if they considered a nerd and, you know, nerds don't take care of their body for some reason, that's a stereotype. Uh, you, you're kind of challenging uh, that assumption that like everybody kind of deserves to live their best life and nerd out on whatever they want to nerd out on. Um, but, you know, let's let's take care of yourself while you do it. Yeah, it's um, I don't know how it happened, but I'm really, really proud of it. It's become a community for people that have been underserved, I think, um, in in the fitness space. Um I would say, you know, 60% of our audience is women. We have a massive LGBTQ plus community. Um, when we host events, you know, I get a chance to meet uh, a really diverse audience of all shapes, sizes, genders, um, and people that are just like regular people trying to live slightly better lives. And, and you know, they've spent most of that life feeling like they have failed a fitness program or they have failed a diet a lot of them, like their moms put them on Weight Watchers when they were like oh. seven, um, you know, 10 years old. And, you know, um, it's they, they stumble across nerd fitness and feel like they found their new home and their new family. And that really uh, like that's that's kind of what keeps me going this this many years later. Um, we're all nerds in some way. Yeah, uh, it's really funny. We get a lot of people that email in and say like, hey, I really like your website. I like your community. I'm not really a nerd. Well, <laughs> but well, I do like birds and then they'll <laughs> talk about birds for like 45 minutes right and yeah. it's like no you're a nerd like you just nerd out about birds like uh -uh. that's that's awesome like that just means you care about something so deeply that you could talk to somebody about it for the next four days 
congratulations welcome to nerd fitness you are in the right spot you're so in we, we love to like celebrate people's different ways that they get to, so for me it's you know i'm a bookworm and a gamer uh, i would say those are the two primary ways that i would consider myself a nerd okay um, i was for, a little nervous others, talking to you like because everybody's got something yeah i was a little nervous talking to you because um i'm just not that into video games uh, i totally get that a lot of people are uh, but you know, for me, uh, I nerded out on radio as a kid, uh, hence why I do a podcast and, uh, you know, so I could talk for days on end specifically about Chicago radio, ask my wife and nobody cares. Uh, <laughs> but my kids don't you know, know what a radio is at this point, but, um, you know, they listen to, to podcasts and then, um, having gotten into fitness in the last uh, couple years myself really, you know, have gamified it with, you know, the, the Garmin watch that tracks, uh, every, you know, thing I do. And then the aura ring that tracks my sleep. And it's totally, you know, nerd central there because, you know, I'm going, walking around like, you know, trying to beat people's sleep score. And, <laughs> and so like, I'm in man, because I get it. Like we all, um, you know, kind of want a safe space to just be who we are and, uh, you know, and then it be okay. Uh, and then at the same time, um, have people around us that support us and, and help encourage us on our own journey. And that's sure. exactly what you're doing. Yeah. I think the other thing that I've, that I've come to learn too, and, and it really kind of coincided with us, um, the, the launching of our coaching program at this point, that was now seven or eight years ago. But, you know, for, for the longest time, the site was very much like Steve Cam has a philosophy. And that philosophy was like, you should probably lift weights. You should probably eat closer to like a paleo style diet. And um, Steve doesn't really like running. So Steve doesn't run. Um, and I, I realized like how limiting that philosophy was. And then eventually came to learn like how not only, not only lim limiting, but, um, I think counterproductive for many people too. Like some people do really well with intermittent fasting. Some people do terribly. Like yeah. the majority of people should probably not be doing keto or paleo. They should probably go to therapy and un like try to figure out their relationship with food and like identify like, you know, it's the carbs aren't evil. It's maybe that you're overeating specific foods because of certain things that have maybe have happened in your life in the past. So, you know, you're talking about wearing an O ring and, and tracking yeah. things like it sounds like that's like th that works for you. It's super motivating. I think for some people um, and it was it was for me like I have an O ring. I had um, uh, I think I bought a whoop. I have an Apple watch, you know, like I've tracked Fitbits. I've like I've bought all of these things. Just, I found it really fascinating. But then I found myself like lying in bed. I'd wake up at two in the morning and be like, oh my God, what's this going to do to my sleep score? Right. It's going to ruin my report. Awake. So like for me, it was like, okay, I now know like there are things I should track. And that's like, I enjoy tracking my workouts. I enjoy, um, you know, I was just doing my workout earlier today and I even bought like fractional, their half pound plates. So every time I work out, I'm lifting more than I've ever lifted yeah, before. You get a PR um, every time. <laughs> Every time I'm hitting a PR, That's amazing. at the same time, like I can't track my sleep because if I do, it makes me so neurotic that I'm like, yeah. oh my God, my sleep score is going to be a 67 instead of a 72 tomorrow. And it's like, uh, you know, that's probably okay. Like your body is going to figure it out over sure. time. Um, so like, it's, it's interesting for each individual person, the, some people hate running. Other people are trying to run a marathon. Like that's awesome. Whatever gets you off your butt and moving. Some people are vegetarians. Other people um, have literally never eaten a vegetable before. It's like, okay, yeah. we need to create a pro. We need to meet you where you are right. to help you. Eventually, we all end up in the same place, which is like we have a healthy relationship with food. We exercise, and it feels like a celebration of movement rather than punishment for the, the food that we just ate. And uh, we prioritize rest. doesn't feel like we're quitting or doesn't feel like we are... Um, beating ourselves up. And instead it's like, no, we might need some rest every once in a while. Like that's okay. So like, these are the types of things that 12 years ago, I wouldn't have had the ability to identify, share, even think about because I was too focused on like, there was one way to do things and it right. works. And when people follow it, 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 it gets them results. And it's like, it works for a certain group of people, but you're leaving behind these others. So that's been a really big learning experience for me. Yeah. That's really wise. Uh, Cause 
last time I checked, there's a lot of different people <laughs> and I know I do love running and I'm, I catch myself being evangelistic about it. And I'm like, wait, guess what? Not everybody cares. Not everybody likes to run. And I'm like, come on. It's, you know, it's so clarifying. It's you're out in nature. You can, you know, get your, um, thoughts clear. And I just don't know why anybody would have a problem with running and there's nothing to figure out. <laughs> just go. <laughs> That's how I feel about strength training. I'm like, I don't understand why everybody doesn't do squats and deadlifts. And it's like, well, there's like, maybe we can get some people there and it's great. But a lot of people have like really bad stigmas or phobias of the gym because of the, they had a terrible relationship with the, you know, their gym class in grade school and they're intimidated. And it's like, those yeah. people probably like, it's okay if they don't go to the gym. Like, that's fine. Um, we can find a different way to help them reach their goals and over time, maybe build up some confidence so that eventually they pick up that barbell or they put on their running shoes and, and walk their first 5K. Like the 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 balance of those things and, and just like a video game, you know, if the challenge is too easy, it doesn't feel fulfilling. But if the challenge is too difficult, if you attack too high of a, an enemy, you're going to get your butt kicked and it's going to be so demoralizing that you're just going to give up. So it's finding that balance of like the right amount of challenge. Right. Uh, I'm a student of flow. I'm just fascinated by that. When you really get in the zone, whatever that is, it, yeah. uh, a video games is a great source of flow for people because you really get into the game and you lose the sense of time and uh, it's really enjoyable. So uh, you want more of it. And uh, I've noticed that with, uh, you know, with getting into flow, it really has to be something that is appropriately challenging. It's just beyond your skill set, but enough that like, it's conceivable that you can do it, but you're really actually going to have to work at it. And it, you know, it's just like 10% higher than what, you know, like you said, you have the half pound plates, it's incremental progress, not, you know, your first time in the gym and you're trying to lift a barbell with hundreds of pounds on it. it like that would be totally demoralizing, uh, but you, it's incremental and you start with where you're at. And so I know uh, in taking that to trying to encourage uh, people just to move around the benefits of just getting out in, into the sunlight. Uh, you know, if you don't want to walk, that's okay. Maybe for you, it's just, uh, you know, taking a walk, uh, down the block, uh, taking your dog for a walk or your kids for a walk or whatever the case may be. Um, uh, but, uh, just get up and do something that's enjoyable for you and, uh, see how far you can, you know, push yourself and then, you know, find what works for you. Sure. I, I, so I'm, I'm a huge fan of flow as well. I even uh, write about it in, in level up your life. Um, that the challenges I ran into is that video games are so good at getting you into flow that like it scratches every one of those itches. And if you're not careful, it can take over, you know, where that life becomes, and it, it's, it's happened to me um, in, you know, even happened to me last year, a game came out called Elden Ring, which was like one of the most difficult, but enjoyable. Uh, I would say is maybe the best, best game ever made it's up there certainly wow. um, but you know for there was a good six weeks there where uh life became the thing i had to endure before i got back into uh -huh. the game so it's identifying like okay what is it about video games that gets me into that flow it's like it's it's all absorbing it requires your focus it's the perfect amount of challenge failure feels encouraging rather than demoralizing it's like how can i transpose those specific things into my real life for projects that I'm interested. So like right now I'm in the process of writing a, writing my next book. Um, and I've taken the last six weeks off from playing a video game. Um, wow. Because I'm like, I know, I know how addicting games can be. And there's a really big game coming out in a few weeks, the next uh, Legend of Zelda game, which I've already set aside time on my calendar to get lost in. But it's uh -huh. like, I, I need to take a break so that I can focus my energy on this book. And the flow needs to be part of this project that I'm working on because the games are so alluring that the flow could get lost there. And then you're sitting around being like, why am I not making progress with my nutrition or my business or my workouts? And it's like, it's because it all got sucked into these games, which are really enjoyable, but they can quickly move from escape. I'm sorry, move from entertainment to escape. Oh, totally. And while I'm not a big video gamer, I understand, you know, it works the same way with, uh, you know, social media exactly oh, engineered the same way to hack your brain. And I don't know if uh, you're familiar with The Social Dilemma, a documentary on Netflix that came out a few yep. years ago. If you haven't seen it, check it out because the the people that made, the engineers that made Instagram and Facebook and the other social media, they're telling you like 
this is what we've done. We've engineered this to hack your attention, to draw you in because that's how they make money, right? The longer you spend sucked into that world, the more they can show you ads and that makes money. So it's not necessarily an evil intent uh, to hack your brain, but that's essentially what they've done so that they can keep your attention focused. And I know I'm neurotic about not uh, seeing that red alert button, right? And so to turn off the alerts, to know that I'm up to date and to the point where uh, at different seasons, and this is one where I, I've taken social media off my phone because I know um, I've got to be present with my kids. I got work to do. There, you know, there's stuff I actually want to accomplish in life. And if I just sit there and scroll, it, it takes away my time and attention uh, without me being mindful of it. Like there goes a half hour, just it's doom like scrolling. Travel device. You like, you like, uh, you go into like the quantum realm or something where like you, you, you open, you know, I literally have it set on my phone for a 15, I, my Instagram shuts off after 15 minutes. Oh, phone. that's cool. Is that an and, app? Like, that 15 minutes, God, it goes by in seconds. And I'm like, what happened? And it's, you know, that was still the same 15 minutes that it took me to do three sets of squats in my basement, right. four sets of squats in my basement. Um, but on the phone, it's in six second increments. You're just, you're chewing up, you know, so much brain power and, and it feels like you're just kind of mindlessly doing it, but like it, it can really zap, um, your stuff. So like I said, I still have it, uh, to, to check in occasionally, but it's like, it's 15 minutes again, right now, like the majority of my time is I write in the mornings and then the afternoons are reserved for doing, you know, podcasts like this or reading books to come up with more material for the book or, um, you know, checking in with nerd fitness. Um, but the majority of it is like, I know where my time needs to go and I'm doing my best to keep the main thing, the main thing, I think to paraphrase, I'm not sure I got that from Ryan holiday, I think, but it's like, no. what's the thing I'm trying to do with my time and energy? It's like, I want to be fit and I want to write a book. So like, those yeah. are the two things that take priority at the moment. Well, and you know, it's an amazing feat to write one book. You're working on number two. Uh, can you give us an idea? What's the thesis of the new book? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, well, so I'm in the process of selling that book. So I have a, you know, going through my book agents and I've been working on it for the past handful of months and now he's shopping it to publishers and um, once he shops it and I meet, I have some meetings with publishers this week. Um, if you know, one of them decides to move forward, then I'm given a certain amount of time to, uh, to write the book. And then, and then I work with an editor and goes back and forth. So, you know, working on the book now, that book still probably won't hit the shelves for another 18 months to 24 months. So it's a, it's a long tail process. Um, I, you know, I, I'm sure the title will change. I'm sure the chapters and sections will change, but the, the premise is really kind of what nerd fitness has become and it's like the diet didn't fail you your mm. workout program didn't fail you um everybody has the best intentions and they they write in their journals and they they hang up their calendar and they they time block their schedule and they have the best possible intentions and the problem is that humans are disasters and life is chaos like that's the only guarantee so how can you make progress when the only guarantees are human nature and mother nature getting in the way. So it's going to be built around this idea of like, hey, look, we're all kind of disasters. Um, you're not alone. Here's how we can be successful in building healthy habits and accomplishing goals, even when life goes to hell in a handbasket because your kid got sick, uh, the your plane was delayed, um, you know, th things of that nature. So it's like, instead of, uh, it's not how to succeed in spite of failure, but essentially how to succeed because of failure. Yeah. How to live in the real world <laughs> and still thrive. Right. Because right, right. Which, is, which is the opposite of what is presented on Instagram, which is, totally. you know, people without clothes on um, telling you that you just need to hustle harder and there's only 24 hours in a day. It's like, man, this is so unhelpful to literally right. everybody on the planet. Or I just need to take this supplement and it'll all be good. Right. <laughs> or avoid <laughs> exactly. this. Uh, man, you just sound, you know, so rational and, uh, common sense. Uh, I love it, but you're, you're not just applying this concept, uh, to, uh, health and fitness. You've actually applied it to your whole life and encouraged people. I know you did a Ted talk, uh, to that end. We'll put the link into the show notes, but, uh, you know, rather than just getting all of your experience in a video game, you're, you're giving yourself points for like real world experiences, uh, which I think is brilliant. And so how do you come up with those? And, uh, 
And, and you know, do, is that an idea that you have seen really gain traction? So I, back when I was, before I had the fun job and before I started Nerd Fitness, I was in a, a bad job that I did not like. And those were the days where I would escape into Middle Earth or Narnia or uh, comic books or video games. And when I started building Nerd Fitness and kind of perfecting and working about this, working through this idea of life as a game, it's like, what are the things that inspire me and the things that I've always kind of daydreamed about but have never done? And it was the characters that I grew up with. It was it was Star Wars. It was James Bond. It was Jason Bourne and Indiana Jones. You know, I, I remember having the VHS tapes for Indiana Jones and Karate Kid. And, and uh, th that's where that's where my that's where my youth was watching the Goonies. You know, it was like these are the movies that that filled my soul as a kid and, and had me running around in the backyard, making bows and arrows and, um, you know, building forts and things of that nature. So when I started this, this idea, man, I, I have never traveled. I'd never been outside of North America. I'd been on like a family cruise that stopped in Mexico for half a day, but that was about it. Um, but I started thinking about Indiana Jones and Jason Bourne and James Bond and said like, how did they, what do those fictional characters do and how can I come up with like a real world example of what they did or what they do and apply it to myself? Well, for Indiana Jones, it was like explore ancient ruins. And I went down to Machu Picchu in Peru and spent a few weeks there. And, and then for James Bond, it was like, what does he do? Like he, put, he wears cool clothes and drinks martinis and gambles. All right, let's, let's figure out how to do that. So I, <laughs> I was living out of a backpack and was in, um, I was in Nice, France, and uh, met somebody at the hostel who spoke both English and French, and we went to a costume shop that also rented tuxedos. And so I rented a tux, and then I took the train to Monaco and used some hotel points to stay at the Fairmont Monte Carlo and then gambled at the Monte Carlo Casino and ended up like making money on the weekend. I read a few books about Blackjack and um, lived like James Bond for a weekend. So it, Who it was, does it was that? You do. To... Yeah, find of a fun way to be like, all right, like who are the characters and what do they do? And like James or Jason Bourne was like, I, you know, I have, I, I lived, I can travel anywhere and have a to-go bag, you know. So like I did all of that and that was uh -huh. super fun and um, it was it was more of like a hey, I wonder if I can do this and use it kind of as a like a inspiration to other people and. You know, at the time I was a single guy. I'm now married, dogs. My wife has built this beautiful garden here. Um, you know, the idea of like, I can go anywhere and do anything. I did it. It was fun. Ultimately, I realized that uh, I think as they say in, um, what was it? Uh, Into the wild, um, happiness is only real when shared. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I lived this life for a year of living out of a backpack and traveling and doing like epic stuff. And uh ultimately realized that like, I wanted to do that with a partner. Um, so my wife and I, you know, we just went to New Zealand for a few weeks back in December. Um, earlier in the year we were in Scotland, so we still travel. Uh, but it's, that's less important to me than the skills now that are more interesting to me in this season of life. So, you know, my book has stories of, of single parents who have come up with, you know, ways to level up their life with their children. Um, you know, it's, um, people, like I said, of all shapes and sizes and uh, experience levels who have turned their lives into games. So it's not just like, hey, watch this, you know, dorky dude travel, but like, hey, here's how you can apply this to your own life. Man, that's so good. It's not just a life hack, but a parenting hack. I was just thinking about that uh, for the kids, you know, take a video game or uh, some character they like in a movie and then find out a real world application where they can go explore and learn and and, you know, actually uh, have an adventure themselves. I know uh, a few years ago, geocaching was really popular. That's one way of doing it. But, you know, it doesn't have to be that. Uh, it's just a matter Pokemon of using Go. that. Pokemon Go is still thriving. And it's like it gets you outside. You have to go to parks to catch Pokemon. Like, I think it's great. Totally. Uh, no, that's great. Uh, well, thanks. Uh, I wonder if uh, somebody's listening and, and is looking, uh, you know, to take the next simple step, whatever that is. That's the thing I love about uh, your uh, 
concept here is there's always kind of another level uh, where you can go and just find your community. Um, what is a, um, a, a simple step to, for someone to explore what that next level is for them? Well, I mean, I think step one for everybody is like, if you're overwhelmed, you know, if you just Google like how to get in shape, you're going to find a thousand different answers. Absolutely. They all work. Yeah, there's a reason every diet essentially works too, because they get you into a caloric deficit. Um, you need to find the one that you want to stick with. So I think if somebody is like, what's the next step? Maybe spend, go for a walk, literally go for a 10 minute walk and just think through the things you've tried in the past. And did any of them, did you actually like any of them? Like if you didn't like going to a boot camp class, then like that's probably not the way for you to get in shape, at least at this point in your life. If you've tried going low carb and it didn't work, it's probably not the way for you right now to get into to, to adjust your relationship with nutrition. So think through some of those things. Um, and that first step would be taking that walk and identifying those things. Um, and I feel like once you start to identify the things that don't work for you, you can kind of close those doors with a clear conscience. You don't have to feel guilty that like, oh, Weight Watchers didn't work for me. I'm a failure. It's like, hey, close the door. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Let's try something different. And that can be, uh, it can be ballroom dancing. It can be LARPing. It can be Pokemon Go. It can be powerlifting. It can be CrossFit. It can be training couch to 5K. It can, there's so many different ways to celebrate movement that I think once you identify the one for you that is like, this doesn't feel like exercise, um, it starts to open some doors and can kind of get the ball rolling. So I would say step one, like get outside, touch some grass, go for like literally a 10 minute walk. And while you're on the walk, don't listen to a podcast. Um, it's probably gonna be uncomfortable if you never are alone with your own thoughts, but maybe take 10 minutes, be alone with your thoughts and think through the things you've tried in the past and like give yourself permission to not beat yourself up that those things didn't work and then maybe identify something new that you can try maybe the next day. Yeah. In AA, they had this phrase, all progress starts by telling the truth. And that's all you're saying here is like, you know, there's a, a million and one ways you can celebrate movement, um, but you only need one that works for you. And so find what's going to work for you. If you happen to uh, be a misfit or consider yourself a nerd and you're looking for a community, check out nerdfitness.com. And uh, Steve, thanks so much for joining us today on the next Simple Step podcast. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It's uh, I, I'm really proud of the community we built and the the team and and everything. So if you're looking for a place and want a, a fun, supportive community to help you on your journey, um, that's what we're here for. Yeah, I love it. Thanks so much.